Both of you uh, have obviously had uh, pretty long careers uh, prior to this. Uh, now you're wading into, I guess, what can some people would already say is a relatively crowded space here. What exactly is it about Quibi that is setting you apart from the other content services out there? Well, let me give you a little perspective about why we're at CES, which is this is the place to launch new technology. <coughs> and interestingly, in Hollywood, you know, you go back through the history, every evolution of technology enabled a whole new way for storytellers to tell their story. So what we talked about today was a new technology platform, which is part of our differentiation versus the other streaming services, that will allow mobile viewing to be extraordinary and enable creators to tell stories in a whole new way for the mobile phone. And just a couple of other things. We think that people will be on Quibi during the day, 7 in the morning till 7 at night, on the go viewing, where they have a chance to watch very fantastic Hollywood quality content, but in those short bites. And we've, we, as I said, we introduced a technology today that, that is full screen video, landscape to portrait, mm -hmm. that allows you to see content in ways you've never seen before. And of course, you've just closed a second round of funding as well, $400 million that'll carry you through the spring launch in April and beyond. Um, Jeffrey, I want to get more on the details here because 175 new original shows, 8,600 episodes of Quick Bite content. As Romain said, this is a crowded field. Who exactly are you targeting here with this content? And how do you convince them to pay another $4.99 on top of their Netflix subscription, their HBO Go, and their Disney Plus? So all good questions. So I, I think a couple of different uh, answers there for you, which is one, our, our content is uh, quite unique, very differentiated from anything that anybody is making today. As Meg said, um, we're relying on this incredible new technology. I hope you guys have a demo there that you can share with the audience. It is really quite revolutionary in terms of the quality of what we can uh, deliver. And then, you know, yes, there's a tremendous volume of content because people want quality, but they also want quantity. We will publish three hours of original content every single day on Quibi. That's 35% more than a broadcast network uh, shows in prime time. The other thing which I think is important to actually both questions that you you all you both were talking about is, is that um, we're not competing for the television set. All of the things that are going on today around OTT and streaming are all focused on what people are doing in front of their TV. Less than 10% of the viewing of Netflix, HBO, Disney Plus, any of them are actually on a telephone. And we are only on a telephone, and so we are highly differentiated, and our use case is quite different. Now, are we competing for the same dollars? The answer is yes, we are. But we think we're offering people something that's new, exciting, um, and, and unlike anything that they've seen before. And our, our bet is, is that um, you know, it will be highly appealing and, as I said, unique. Oh, okay. Um, so can you talk a little bit, though, about uh, the cost, I guess, to sort of uh, get up to speed or, I guess, uh, just to get that content out there? Obviously, we mentioned the fundraising uh, that you've had so far. Uh, we mentioned the $400 million. But you like take a, a company like Netflix, which I know might, may not be a direct competitor, but you're talking about a company that's spending $15 billion per year on their own content. Uh, and I'm wondering, in that context, uh, how does the amount of money you've raised so far sort of get you the sort of, uh, I guess, presence that some of those other companies already have? Sure. Well, here's something I would point out. So we would be the first streaming service that will launch without a library because you can't just take an hour-long television show and chop it up into six 10-minute segments. Everything is created new for Quibi because the platform is new and, and the viewing experience is completely different. And we think with 175 shows, 8,600 episodes, as you mentioned earlier, it's a unique content strategy and there's a lot of content. And so we think our, you know, we've, um, as you know, had a fundraise before this one, and th this fundraise will carry us right through the middle of 2021. So we're well funded, and uh, you know, we'll we'll see how we how we start off. But we feel great about the amount of content that we're creating for this device in this quick bite, on the go viewing kind of format. Yeah, but content isn't cheap at all, Meg. And um, as Romain makes clear, Netflix is paying a lot for that. You'll be paying all production costs, and I believe you don't retain the rights indefinitely as well. So can you walk us through the path to profitability? 
Yeah, so listen, we, we created a business plan that investors underwrote with a clear path to profitability. You know, Jeffrey and I both run public companies. We actually know a very simple fact that revenue ultimately <laughs> needs to be more than costs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have a very clear path to profitability, which is shorter than most of these uh, you know, streaming services have released. And, uh, and, and investors underwrote that. And yes, you're right, we pay the cost of production plus 20%. We license it in its short form to Quibi for seven years. And then the talent actually owns their own IP, which is a big differentiator for us, which explains why we have everyone in Hollywood wanting to make content for us. But we're happy to have that profit pool be delivered to the creators, and we will live on the platform profit pool of advertising and subscription revenue. So how do you balance this out? I mean, you're obviously getting a lot of big names. Uh, we were looking through some of the celebrities that have already uh, uh, signed up to yeah. participate in this. But then you compare that to something like TikTok, which has become a phenomenon with people who no one knows, no no one knows, but they're able to sort of generate <laughs> yeah. a ton of uh, entertaining content, entertaining to some people. Uh, so how do you sort of balance this out between paying for these uh, big celebrities versus these unknowns? Yeah, I, I think these are really quite different things. I mean, listen, there's amazing stuff being created on TikTok. As you know, it's all user-generated content. Um, we look at the world of uh, YouTube and Facebook Watch and ITV and all of these things that have uh, IGTV that have been created. And we admire the work that's been done there, but it's not what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what I, the way I would frame it for you is, is that um, if you look at the uh, investment in the content itself, it's in dollars, if not hundreds, and maybe in some cases a few thousand dollars a minute. We're making content at $100,000 a minute. Mm -hmm. And you cannot compare you know, $100,000 in the hands of Academy Award winner Guillermo del Toro and in, you know, some young entrepreneurial influencer who's spending $400 a minute in it. It's not that it's better or, or worse, it's just different. Sure. And we believe that different is meaningful and that people will actually respond to it. Now, listen, it's all new. You've never seen it before. No one had ever seen our tech before today. I think people are impressed with it. I know our filmmakers in Hollywood have been blown away by it. Right. And they're the ones who've embraced it and now are using those tools to tell great stories. Um, again, I hope you have some clips that you're able to share with the audience today in it. It's, it's amazing and it's unlike anything you've seen before. Now the next thing that we have to show you is the content. Yeah. And if the content is great and it is differentiated, our bet is people will pay for it. I guess my, my last question, and it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek here, Jeff, is how do you beat real life? Uh, <laughs> Carlos Ghosn escaping Japan in a big black box, uh, the president being the president. I mean, scripted content almost can't compete with what we're seeing in real life. <laughs> well, you know, I've spent my life as a storyteller, and there's always been big real news going on in the world in it, and somehow or another we, uh, we do manage to give people an opportunity maybe to escape from yeah. some of that stuff is not so bad.